Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be with you this morning from uh, St. David's Church. Welcome to our short act of worship this morning. And following our worship, uh, the rector will appear, as from nowhere, uh, with a, a short message for everybody. So we take a few moments to still our hearts and minds as we prepare to come into God's presence. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so in the silence of our hearts, we bring before Almighty God those times that we have fallen short of his glory. And as we are reminded in Scripture, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And we pray the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some words from Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. And now a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in a parable, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they fall quickly away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. 
But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what is sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so may I speak and may you listen in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the psalm this morning started with the words, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Sometimes we travel very difficult, times that seem very dark, or feel that God is far away. Day by day and week by week we spend time reading scripture, scripture in which God is revealed to us anew each and every time we spend and sit with his word. One of the strangest things at this time is to not be able to sit and explore his word with you Sunday by Sunday. Yet it is vital in our Christian journey that we continue to engage with scripture and grapple with his meanings. If that which we encounter in scripture is truly a lamp for our feet and a light for our path, like the seed falling on good soil in the gospel reading, we come closer to better understanding. And from there, what infinite possibilities do we have to spread the love of God abroad in our communities, amongst our family and friends, and amongst those we encounter in our daily lives. I pray that we come to a deeper understanding of God's great plan for us, even in those darker times. In the words of that great hymn, which is one of my favourites, we always remember that we have a gospel to proclaim. Amen. And so, in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. United by baptism into the death of Christ, we seek to be bearers of his life. Give to your faithful people the strength to take up the cross and to follow Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. where selfishness makes people cling to false values, reveal the way of peace through the death of self. Give freedom from the sin that diminishes fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us, our families, friends and neighbours, with the spirit of mutual care. As servants of our master, let us be servants of one another, unselfish in our relationships, seeking the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who are persecuted for their faith. Shield them from violence and give them hope. And we pray for all those who are sick at home or in hospital all who are scared and vulnerable, all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enrich with new life those who have died in faith. As they passed through the waters of baptism in this world, Bring them through the gate of death into glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a short moment of quiet reflection, we bring before Almighty God the prayers, petitions and thanksgivings of our own hearts. and seeking new life through the saving death of Christ, 
We pray in the words that our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life, until the shades lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved. To God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts. Be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Amen. And now I'm going to hand over to the rector who shall appear before you. Just like Paul Daniels, just like that, appearing out of nowhere. Thank you, Reverend Stewart. It was good to hear Reverend Stewart's favourite hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim, and it's one of mine as well. When we're all back together, we'll certainly be singing that when we're able to. Today's announcement concerns the gospel being proclaimed in another part of our deanery. Reverend Emma, who has been with us for four years on placement and with us as at the start of our curacy, is now going to be licensed on Wednesday morning to the Vale of Nice and parts of the Dillice Valley. Reverend Emma will be under the care of Father A.J. Davis up in Glynis. And I know that Emma's going to have a wonderful time there. I was with the good people of the Vale of Neath on placement and I truly had a lovely time. So Emma goes with our love, with our thanks, and with our prayers for all that she has done here in the in our parish for all that she has the seeds that she has sown and the prayers that she has held us in during her time we pray for her we pray for Anthony her husband and for Heather and Christian as they start now their new chapter and we thank God for Emma's ministry here I'd ask you to pray for Emma on Wednesday, especially as she's been licensed virtually with Zoom. And I'd ask you to continue to pray for the family and for Father AJ in Glynith and the good people of Glynith and the Dillis Valley. And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and for whom you pray today and always. Amen.